The last time I saw this man, we were on a double-decker bus. His teammates were celebrating their first MLS Cup trophy with Toronto FC. The bus was packed. Beers were everywhere. The streets of Toronto were lined with literally thousands of supporters on a Monday. For some reason, I was holding the MLS Cup, which is like 20 pounds, for about 10 minutes, and it's heavy. Wearing my gloves on the bus ride to Toronto City Hall from the Air Canada Centre, still levitated by the euphoria of scoring one of the top three biggest goals in his professional career to win the MLS Cup, Josie Altador enjoyed every second. I'm pleased to welcome Josie Altador to the Cabbie Presents podcast. A round of applause for you, sir. Yeah, you know, I, is it MLS Cup fun? Where are your cleats in your jersey from that game? Man, funny enough, actually, you say that. I'm having them all, like, framed and stuff. Okay, sick. I so you still to, have it? Yeah, I, I start to do that now. I start to keep things that are, you know, have, there were big moments in my career. I, I start to keep them now and try to, like, put them up or something like that so my son can see them. Nice. Kind of cool, you know? If the like the the American Soccer Hall of Fame called and like, hey, we want one of those cleats, would you send it to them? Yeah, why not? It's the Hall of Fame. Any player would love to be in the Hall of Fame, right? It's cool. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I don't know yeah. how I don't know how much of an emotional attachment you have. Like, oh, this, um, this I'd probably the give him a copy. I don't know if I'd give him give the, me a copy. I'm not giving him the game more. So stay with me, man. Unless they want to pay for them then right you know. well what's what's the value on the on these streets with the oh no <laughs> game worn oh, cleats oh no you got you know we got to get there first I don't Cham- know championship that. boots as you say you're you're keeping more souvenirs from your accomplishments and some, from your games yeah your trophy case how does it look right now trophy case is gonna look nice when it's all done got a lot of a lot of wins in there with Toronto fc a lot of cups and hopefully you're gonna build on that this year man so it's, it's coming along nicely Sick. Your last in your last public appearance, and it wasn't Fashion Week. It was just after uh, people in Canada, or certainly people in Toronto, saw a photograph of Javenko, you, Drake, James Wilder Jr., oh, okay. S.J. Green. Uh, it was uh, um, Kelly Gruber of the Toronto Blue Jays and Darcy Tucker of the Toronto Maple Leafs. All the Toronto teams were represented at Welcome to Toronto Night at the Air Canada Center. The Raptors played the uh, Houston Rockets, and they won that game. Yeah. What happened after the game? What do you mean? Well, like, well, like you're you're hanging. You meet all these people. There's the, some luminaries in Toronto. Kelly Gruber is a two-time World Series champion. Uh, <laughs> Darcy Tucker never they never won a, a Stanley Cup with the Toronto Maple Leafs. But and you know Wilder, James Wilder Jr., S.J. Green, um, Great Cup champions. You guys are MLS Cup champions. Drake has been a champion ever since. Best I ever know, had. Hot, best I ever had. Yeah, that since was a big two. He's been like champion. Yeah, that's that's champion. a big. So that's like 2009. Yeah, he's been champion for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys all meet in like that? Is it the chairman's lounge where like the you know nah. like VIPs go Champ- or champagne room in the shirt club? The shirt club. Was there an appearance in the shirt club after that game? No, that's where you just go to hang out after the game, right? To, Did you go to like, pick like six? You said to, I didn't. I actually, I might have. Yeah, I might have for a bit to have some food. And stuff. <laughs> I don't. That was like a month ago. Not yeah. even a month ago. Yeah, it's a cool. It's a new. It's a new like dinner spot. Chubs opened up, so I went there had some food. That was cool. Nice. Yeah. Chill night. I don't know if you do this. You probably don't because you're not, uh, I don't know, a child like I am. But the uh, first time I met Kelly Gruber, we were at this charity event. I was like, Kelly, I need you to tell me two stories. Because like some do, some of the old, the OGs have some wild stories. Mm-hmm. And uh, he told me one about a slump buster, which is tremendous. And then one about Roberto Alomar, which I can't tell on this thing. But it was amazing. In those, when you meet soccer OGs or other OGs from various sports, is there an exchange of stories or like experiences or just like championship memories that you guys have? Um, Maybe not on this particular night, but in general. Um, I will say this though, I'll put this on record, put a little pressure on the man. Drake did say he's gonna have a party for us and uh, host a night for us somewhere. I don't know where it is, how to place TBD to be determined later, I guess. But he did say that, so I'll let the people know that. Okay. So. Drizzy, you hearing that, bro? I don't forget. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're still waiting for that. That guest list is that, like uh, that super exclusive. Yeah, man. I mean, it's champions. It's champions. Right. Party. Okay, Cham- fair. Champions That's, only. You know what I'm saying? The only way to get it is you have to have a ring. You, you have to have, have a yeah, championship gotta, ring. At the door, they're going to ask you for a ring. If you don't got a ring, you can't get past the bouncers. Yeah. <laughs> There's no chance. I'm going to have to experience that on Instagram. That's or, or somebody's Snapchat. Nah, feed. man. I'm playing. All Toronto will be welcome, I'm sure. But yeah, I ain't forget, Drake. So 
Make sure you tell them that we see them too. Okay, for, yeah, I will. Cool. I will. Um, the um, one of the pictures in the last six months that stood out to me on your Instagram account was the night with Usain Bolt and PK Subban in Miami. Was that at yeah. Live? Were you guys at Live? We were at. Uh, where, where were we at? Uh, we were at. Uh, and how did I that? I remember. We how did that somewhere. photo come to be? Um, we were all in the same section, and uh, we were just hanging out, and yeah, just. We were having a night, right? Just enjoying ourselves, everybody on their break, kind of. And yeah, it was cool. Well, no, PK wasn't on his break. I mean, it's in the middle of the season. No, nah, he was on a break during that time, I think. In like, when was it? He it was, was after in, you guys he, won, right? Yeah, it was after we won. It was in uh, end of December. I think I want to say end of December. No, oh, man. I don't remember exactly. But it, nah, it, he had no commitments and he was still training <laughs> twice a day, doing all that. And, you know, he's a professional, man. He's a top professional, so he didn't let any days go to waste. Of course he did. Of course he is. Yeah. I had one of the greatest nights I've ever had in Miami be- as a result of PK. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're at Live, and it was just, I'm just like, why am I even in this booth? I'm contributing yeah. nothing to this to this party other yeah. than dancing, singing, but financial, uh, co- uh, contributions, financial contributions, absolutely zero. Yeah. And just taking up all of the resources, <laughs> i.e. adult beverages. Yeah, you got to enjoy yourself, man. So I don't blame you for that. When you're with other famous people, you like everybody kind of acts cool. Except maybe I think Kevin Hart might say, all right, let's get a picture together. Let's get a picture. Yeah. So who does like the, is it like one of you guys or is it general like someone in the crew like, oh, you guys should take a picture. Who makes the suggestion? Because um, everybody's, you guys are all alphas. You want to, you know, everybody's kind of cool about yeah, things. I think we're all just chilling, to be honest. I think the club, somebody at the club we were at, the, the venue came over and was like, can we get a picture? And we're all like, yeah, cool. So, you know. I mean, it's cool at the same time, too, to be, you know, it's not every day you're out with guys like that, that, you know, you know, at the highest level, you know, all three of us have been able to contribute. So Usain is terrific at what he does. PK, you know, doing great stuff in hockey. You know, he's a brother in hockey. I I take that very serious. I love love watching (laughs) him out there doing his thing. So, yeah, it was cool, man. Cool people doing great things. And it's great to see. Uh, Okay, speaking of Miami, um, your lady. Playing tennis there right now, yes? Yeah. Um, what is the exercise or training thing that she does that you're happy that you don't have to do as a soccer player? Um, I don't know. I, I don't mean, think, I don't think anything. I think what she does, most of the stuff we got to do. Like ladders? Yeah, it's, and all, it's all a lot of it. It's more, explo- similar than, it's more similar than you think in terms of the training stuff. And she's getting after. She works hard, man. So, and it's tougher. I think it's tougher in tennis because you're by yourself doing it. Yeah. These are the team. You got a group of guys doing it, so you got to push yourself constantly. That ain't easy. And then when she's doing it, you know, if I'm ever there, I, you know, I got my feet up. Like, there you go, baby. Good job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there you go. Run that lap, girl. Run that lap. So, nah. But I actually have a bone to pick with y'all. With who? I said it earlier with TSN. What's the What's the bone? Because I can't watch her play. Because y'all don't. I don't know. You guys don't show the games. You don't have the rights or whatever. So. I to the Miami game. Open. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm flicking for it, and then I see all these dudes matches. I, you know, I don't really care for them. I'm trying to watch. No, that's fair. That's fair. I was watching Milos Raonic compete uh, the other day, and uh, Dennis Shapovalov. Milos uh, cool. Milos Dennis is cool. You know, yeah, they cool. But everybody else, I ain't trying to see them. Okay, listen, you I don't. Know, okay, you know, I will. So you know. I will send an email to see if we can get Sloane Stevens. Yeah, we need to see her matches up here in Canada. I'm just saying. As a request per Josie Altidore. There you go. I like that. Um, have you played a friendly game of like keep away, and have have you also played? Whether it's ping pong or some version of tennis with your lady, <laughs> her soccer skills are getting better. I'll say that. Um, Can she dribble like the? Well, no, what do you guys call it? Look, man, she, baby steps, bro. <laughs> <laughs> baby steps. You know, they're getting better. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah. Tennis, though, you know. How's your boy? How's I'm your? All, hey, listen, I can survive. That's all I'm gonna say. If she ever gets injured, she needs a sub. You know what I mean? <laughs> Does she play with her left hand? With the Why with the racket. Always, you, every time I talk to you, you always try to. Like, take a shot at me. What bro. do you mean? She plays with her right Not hand, just man. the height plays of with her a good sport, hand. my G. She plays with a good hand. I can't beat her. That's what you want to know. <laughs> That's besides the point. All right? Okay. But everybody else, you know what I'm saying? You let me know. Okay, fine. Uh, what about ping pong? Ping I saw, pong. Do you watch Atlanta? Atlanta who? The, the, the TV show Atlanta. What's that? I've never seen it. What are you talking about? Donald Glover? No, I've never seen it. Oh, man. See, okay, there's time to catch up. Okay. There, it's only season two. It's like episode, I don't know, three or four right now. There's time Donald to catch Glover, up. Like, um, Leave the Weapon? No, that's not Donald Glover. No, that's, that's Danny Glover. Oh, my bad. I don't think Donald Glover is related to Danny Glover. I don't think. Donald, Donald Glover, Glover was in, like, Community. He was a writer on 30 Rock. He was in hip-hop. His nickname was Childish Gambino. He had a song Ch- called 3000. Gamb- I know Childish Gambino. Okay, that's, that's Donald Glover. Oh, that's his okay. real name. 
Yeah, so he's got a show called Atlanta. In one of the episodes, okay. it's a ping pong match against his girlfriend. They're having a fight, and that was how they tried to resolve it. Oh, I got you. Because there's no like better form of one on one. Yeah. Than ping pong. That's true. It's really it's intense. Ping pong is intense. Uh, the famous movie Love and Basketball. The scene at the end, which like let's they play, play for your heart. One. Yeah. So now Lathan, Omar Epps. Yeah, that was two weeks before Omar Epps getting married. She's like, no. I still love you. Let's play for yeah. your heart. It's like double or nothing. Yeah. Have you guys had one of those games? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Thankfully enough, we haven't. You know, she's uh, she's great, man. She's brought me some of the best moments of my life. So oh, that's... we're only on the highs. Thankfully enough, we haven't had too many lows. So let's keep that going. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, last, yeah. qu- last question. Um, how long before did you guys wait to let everybody know that you guys were a thing? Be- um, I think with anything, you just want to make sure that you have a foundation first, right? Yeah, fair. I think yeah, that yeah. was the biggest thing. And then we're both like private people. We're not, you know, too caught up with the perception gram? and stuff like that. You know, that's what I love about her. She's not really worried about what everybody else is thinking all the time. So we don't always have to be doing stuff and all these pictures and all this stuff because she knows I'm not really into that. But I got to get better at that. I get it because I kind of have to give a little bit to what the world is now. So I get that. But. <laughs> I'm a work in progress when it comes to that. Listen, your that. Instagram feed is is sick because it's just like. It's, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Somebody says something. Yeah, no, but it, it's great. It's just like these great soccer appreciate moments. You. Like that's yeah. that's your life. It's your yeah. your but blood, I know, sweat, and tears. I know tears. I got to get to the other side of it, and I know. Well, I, there I, was that Christmas post. It was, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. See, it's like, hey, you know, happy happy, holidays. I, I like you, man. I take it back. You oh, know, I, you but I'm the creepiest man alive, my dude. Are you? Like, if you check your phone right now, there's 30 messages in your DM just for me. Okay, so let's get back to soccer. Yeah. You guys got to play. You're playing in the CONCACAF Champions League, and you're playing against Club America. Yeah, you're going into it to use a, a a metaphor that's synonymous with sports. Like you're going into like the Gladiators Arena. Yeah, April 10th, you're going to be in Mexico City. Eighty-seven thousand people at Azteca Stadium. Even the elevation is a thing. <laughs> you're seven thousand feet above yeah. sea level, and the men's U.S. national team hasn't really fared that well there. Yeah. But you're going with a different group of guys. Yeah. Preparation-wise, I'm sure it's on point. What are your expectations? Obviously, you, you play them at home April 3rd, but then April 10th. So I'm talking specifically when you go to Mexico City and you're in, uh, thousands of people are, are screaming. What are your um, expectations then for yourself and, and the Reds? Um, Business as usual, man. I mean... You know, it's not it's nothing new to me. It's nothing new to a lot of the guys playing in front of big crowds and, you know, with, with big stakes. So it'll be business as usual. Obviously, you know, hopefully by that point, um, the scenario will be different in terms of the aggregate. We don't know how the first leg is going to go, but hopefully we go down there and there's everything to play for. And uh, I look forward for, for a really good game from both teams, and I hope the fans enjoy it because, you know, in the end of the day, we're nothing without the fans. Listen, okay, sure. You're not the one out there. Yeah, at home, yeah. But when you're like there, there's, <laughs> there might be a sm- like a like a speckle of of Canadians. Yeah, not gonna be many. No, in, in that stadium. Yeah. Um, when the team is so offensive, like they've been, they're like undefeated in 17 games. You probably had this scouting report repeated back to you. Um, two of their strikers have scored three. Um, was it Henry, Henry Martin and Cecilio Dominguez? Three goals each in the tournament. These brothers, these cats have scored nine ga- goals in road games. When a team is that offensive, uh, how does that change your team's approach? Do you guys like, okay, let's just try to lock them down? No. Just try to squeak out a one nothing. No, it doesn't change result? anything. You know, look, we're an attacking team as well. We believe we have weapons going forward, and we think, we think that we've proven now over you know, two, three years that we're a team that can score consistently on anyone. And so... You know, that's not even the thought process. We're worried about what they're going to do. We're worried about what we're going to do and how we're going to hurt them. And so that, that when you have two teams like that that have that mindset going up against each other, it makes for a really salivating matchup. And I think uh, a lot of people are looking forward to it, as we are as players. It will be a great test for us. What, if anything, uh, can you learn or take away from the friendly you guys played there, what, January? December, a lot. January? We played them in... When do we play? That's a good question. February. Fe- February? A lot. I think you got to first look at them. Um we had never played them or a team like them, so I thought that was hugely important to kind of get to play against their players, their guys. Their best team played for quite a bit in that scrimmage, and so we got an amazing look at them. And so we had that in the back of our mind that if we advanced, maybe we'd meet them down the road, but obviously you never know. So the fact that we're here now, I think 
everybody feels comfortable in the opponent in terms that we know what to expect a little bit. So there's no, there'll be no surprises there. So I think that was invaluable for us to go down there for preseason. Does Seba always get to kick the free kick? Yeah, he's he's the he's the free kick Don, bro. <laughs> he is. But look, it's not just here though. Look, it's not just here. People sleeping on the man. Like people always some people say, Oh yeah, they go in there, but they wouldn't go. I mean, goalies can't fly in other countries, bro. Like where he's putting them, you know, I think, you know, no goalie is gonna be able to get to him. So I think he deserves a lot more credit with his ability from the dead ball positions. I think he's he's very, very good at that. Say, so, okay, so like is there ever like a where someone's like, Oh, let me get this one in, let me yeah, I have my moments all the time where I'm like, you know, I feel good. I got two goals. Maybe I'll go for the hat trick. And it's a foul free kick. Everything feels right. And then he just like, you know, in the shows, like he just cut you off in a moment. And that, that music plays in my head. Like, nah, 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 you know. <laughs> but it's cool, man, because I love the guy. We have such a great relationship, so there's no hard feelings. And I believe in him more than anybody. You know, obviously, everybody believes in him, but I know what he's capable of. And so there's never, you know, we've been lucky enough. We never had a real spat or anything like that. So it's been smooth sailing. Every time that I've seen you out, whether we've been just like at a restaurant or a patio for a charity event or something, it's like it's you, Seba, yeah. Toss, occasionally also yeah. like Jonathan. Like that's that's like the squad. And I know that on like in on baseball teams, which are probably roughly the same size as a soccer team, I think baseball twenty four guy twenty five guys, hockey is about the same, and soccer's yeah. the same. Some, some that like their little mini squads. Is that your squad? Like, if if there's a photo of like gang gang or like hashtag squad, is that the <laughs> man? That's that a quartet? You know, people, I, for some reason. That's probably the most asked question I get in Toronto. It is. Yeah. Who like, do you hang out with on yeah, the team? And 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 it's weird because I can't answer it because on you know one month or one week it'll be with Oso and and Seba and Toss, and then the next time will be with Jay Chapman and Alex Bunt. Like our team, everybody's good with everybody, and it's weird. We have a we have a like a. Uh, an, an, an age, an age group, an eight, like the maximum age on our team, I think is Drew Moore. He's like 33, 34, but still a kid at heart. So you have a bunch of young guys on a team in a city like Toronto. So, you know, we all hang out all the time and it's we just gel incredibly. So that's one of our strengths, I think, the fact that how well we all get along. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. Well, I've only seen the four. I'm going to, in my brain, I'm going to make that's the squad because it was like the four <laughs> okay. times I've seen you Fair guys. Enough. Yeah. The, those four dudes. Fair enough. Uh, as the World Cup descends on us yeah. in... June, July, which is taking place in Russia. Um, and unfortunately, the men's, the American uh, men didn't qualify. Yeah. But will you still be uh, enraptured in it like we are, the rest of us just watching? Or will you just like, uh, will it hurt? Will it hurt too much not to, or to, to watch knowing that you guys could have been there too? Um, a little bit, but, you know, people don't understand that nobody, there's not one nation in the world that has a, has a right to qualify automatically for the World Cup. It, I it, feel it, like Germany and nah, Brazil listen, are like listen, those. They get automatic listen, bids regardless. Obviously, there are some teams that never had to experience it, but to not go, I think in a lot of ways it's difficult. It's hard to take, but it also allows some time as a, as a country and a federation to improve and maybe look at some things that have been overlooked over time and, and for us to get better at. So it'll be bittersweet, but it's a celebration of the most beautiful sport in the world, so I can't feel down about that. I'm, I'm happy for, for all the teams that qualified, and I hope it's a great tournament for all the fans. Hey, well, are you going to watch or no? Am I going to watch? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. I got some responsibilities and stuff, bro. I got my son. Oh, I got to play for okay. TFC. Sure, sure, you know? sure. Yeah. I know you got, I got, you, I got you things I got to do, man. I got things I got to do. And all do. over the uh, North America. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a busy man. But obviously, I'll take in that game here and there for sure. I'm a, I'm a soccer fan, so I love to watch good games. Oh, man. I, and, like, and this is a small thing. I remember the first time we met, we were in Sunderland. And which is I had oh, to like fly God. to London and then we had to fly to Sunderland and you were the you're like maybe the only brother I mean I don't know how many brothers were on the Sunderland team but you showed up in like a black on black it was like either BMW seven forty five or it was uh, it was uh, what was oh, it was it a Jeep no you were you were in like was, a, a seven oh, it was a coupe I, yeah, it was no a coupe. it was a coupe it was a it was a Benz something with a C C sixty three maybe AMG oh yeah maybe yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, right, that's we smooth, just, smooth yeah, yeah, yeah. We just met in like this random park and like. Yeah. What was and, up with that? Why did you with the globe? I remember that. Like, yeah, we're playing. What, what, yeah, keep up with the globe. Yeah. What was that? I don't know. Just listen. I gotta come up with like weird. You weird see how sh- crazy it is? Like, like destiny, fate. Like I <laughs> right. met you in like some park. That's right. And you were from Canada, from That's Toronto. Right. Like it didn't. You know what I mean? Now look at us, man. You That's know? right. That's we'll right. We're almost way, friends. Man. It's crazy. Almost. We're, we're yeah. almost. Not there I'm, yet. I'm working. We'll never be there, but you know. Well, listen. Every, cool. <laughs> every, listen, you have goals of soccer glory. I have goals of friendship. We want to happen ever. With, well, that's cool. We can all, we can all dream. That's, You're a cool dude, though. A, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. 
I gave trickle, you wrong. Trickle, I gave you a fake star. number two. What's that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was as heartbroken as America was in that Ghana game because when you went down with the, with your like your hamstring just yeah, like exploded. Hamstring. Yeah, literally. Oh my gosh! And we had this sick thing with like Iceman that we had playing like graphically. A friend of mine plays Iceman or played Iceman in the X Men movies, like the four okay. first X Men movies. So we had this whole animation where just to like fix your and you were gonna come back <laughs> if you guys beat Belgium. It was a it was a Bel- Belgium. You guys would have played Argentina. No, Argentina. Argentina. I think if we beat Belgium, I think it was. I could be wrong, obviously, but I think the next game was Argentina yeah. on Independence Day on July fourth. Right. So that would have been a that would have been amazing for the for our nation. You yes. Know, to play that game on that day would have been pretty. That would have been similar. like Super Bowl numbers. Would have been pretty cool. <sighs> next time. Nah, man. Nah, it is what it is. It just gives you that to make it another a new opportunity, even better one day. So that's the lesson. Listen, if you ap- apply some Tom Brady slash, um, I'm trying to think who's got like the fountain of youth right now in like North American sports. Tom Brady's like the first guy I can think of. LeBron, bro. Braun, okay, Tom, uh, Braun and Tom Brady, you're going to have to invest $1.5 million in your body every year. That's what yeah. LeBron does. And then also work out with Tom Brady's guy. I think his name is Alex Guerrero. Yeah. What I'm saying is we need to extend your career. Are you 30 yet? I'm almost 30 in two years. I'm You're almost 30. Okay. So listen, 2022. No, they, the U.S. men's national team got some young bucks. We need to make sure there's an OG. An OG. And the OG is still. You think I'm that OG? We'll see, man. You never know. You never know. Okay. Tw- I'm holding on to 2022. That. Will you let me yeah. have that dream? I, you can have it. As well as your friendship? You can have the dream. <laughs> Jazzy Altsor, thank you very no much problem, for being on the Captain Presents podcast. Me. And I wish you much luck, sir. Appreciate that, my man.